Hello, I'm Lindsay, and I'm part of the clergy team here in the parish of Portishead. The last few weeks, we have been really busy planning the church's stand for the Portishead Summer Show. Many of you have fluffed up tissue paper to make brightly coloured paper flowers, transformed young hazel twigs into delicate tissue paper leaves. Wood has been hammered and sawn, pine cones collected, clay purchased, vegetables grown, emails sent and plans drawn up. All this preparation is creating a unique interactive space in which we will be inviting those that visit the summer show to ponder the question, what is prayer? Mary Oliver's poem, Praying, describes prayer as a vacant lot or a few small stones and a silence into which another voice may speak. Let me read it to you. Praying by Mary Oliver. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention, then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. At the summer show, we are taking a vacant lot and inviting those that walk past to ponder Mary Oliver's poem. We will be inviting those that visit our stand to populate a bug house with bugs that they've made out of clay, inviting them to press their hands into the clay and pay attention to the texture of the clay and the shapes that the clay forms in their hands. You might say we are putting clay around God and by inviting people to wander on our stand and read Mary Oliver's poem, we are creating a space for people to see God in the miracle of creation. To stop, pay attention and listen to creation herself. Listening creates in the words of the poet Mary Oliver, a silence in which another voice may speak. It requires focus, discipline, patience and preparation. So my focus for today's thought for the day is about preparation. I'm asking how do you prepare for prayer? For some that preparation might mean going for a walk or a run, sitting somewhere quietly and lighting a candle, gardening or listening to a passage of scripture can already our hearts for prayer. The Bible gives us two Psalms, perfectly suited for this purpose. Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 are an introduction to prayer, a call to attention, to prepare ourselves to enter into that space of prayer. Psalm 1 uses the imagery of a tree and we are reminded that we need to be rooted and grounded in God's nourishing word so that we flourish and yield fruit. In order to receive God's nourishment, we are to make God's word an essential part of our lives, meditating on scripture and being guided by his words. Psalm 2 uses the imagery of the Messiah, and while initially written about King David, we can also see how this psalm beautifully describes Jesus, the complete Messiah, God among us. This psalm focuses on the world around us, reminding us how God is at work in this world. God is not a silent observer, but active in our hearts and active in our world. Together, these psalms set our eyes to see God at work around us, encouraging us to step out in faith and be the hands and feet of Jesus in our communities. Our preparation is to listen, to make a space to listen to God. So how do we do this? How do we listen to God? Jesus has answered this question for us. Jesus asks us to consider the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. A consideration which he tells us should encourage us to see that if we first strive for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then our journey of faith is full of hope 
at endless beautiful possibilities. But maybe in our listening, we forget to actually listen. We forget to stop. So instead of listening, we just chat away loudly in search for the God who will solve all our problems and will make everything come out all right. In fact, there is no magic God who solves all our problems. There is no magic wand. There is not a God who will grant us our deepest wishes and our most extravagant desires. In seeking the magic God, we find nothing and meet only an empty silence. The one true God radiates a silence that is crying out to us from the refugee camps around the world, from the children who go to school hungry, from homeless shelters, and from those whose lives and homes are destroyed by climate change. God, our creator, addresses us all in and through all of creation, through the weeds on a vacant lot or a few small stones. The one true God calls out to us from the rivers choked with sludge, deforested wasteland and dying coral reefs. This God is ready to be found. This God's arms are outstretched. This God is present and longing to be heard. We only need to listen. I'm going to read you again the poem by Mary Oliver, which invites us into a prayerful listening. I invite you to ponder how you might prepare for your journey to the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. As I read to you again the poem by Mary Oliver, which invites us into prayerful listening, I invite you to ponder how you might prepare for your journey to the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Praying by Mary Oliver It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention, then patch a few words together And don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but a doorway into thanks. And a silence in which another voice may speak. Mm 